Hey guys, Chris here with the Xiaomi 13T Pro. So this is my review of it, and why this video is a little bit different is because I'm recording on the 13 Pro right now with an external microphone. I thought I would just give you some sample footage straight off the bat here. So the title isn't clickbait. Yes, this phone is faster than 3D performance, for gaming when you game for long periods than this here, an iPhone 15 Pro Max. Of course, it's A17 Pro chip is getting a lot of hype. In fact, too much hype, overhyped. And this phone, which is cheaper, actually performs better, games better than this here, which has some throttling issues. And you'll see in the video. Now, this is gonna surprise you. Take a look at this. This is the iPhone 15 Pro Max that I have here. So yeah, the titanium frame there, so that's proof. The throttling performance is so much worse on the iPhone. So in two minutes, it tanks its performance. And you can see the lowest score here is worse off than this. Yes, you're hearing that right. So this is what is included. And I hope that Xiaomi never change. Please just keep with this. We get our charge 120 watts. Officially, they say you can fully charge the phone in just 19 minutes. For me, it's a little bit longer. Normally takes about five minutes longer. 24 to 26 minutes. Our type A to type C cable. There is a little bit of paperwork here. Our SIM tray tool. And we even get, yes, a TPU case to protect it. So you don't have to go and buy one. Now let's take a look at our design and build a little bit. The front here, this is a 6.7 inch screen and it is AMOLED and screen fingerprint reader works really well. And it's covered with Gorilla Glass 5. The phone weighs 206 grams and I have the synthetic back on here, which does feel really good, adds a bit of texture to it. Now the frame around it, it's not bad. I thought originally that this was a plastic frame, but is in fact alloy, but it's got that kind of feel and look to it like it's more like a Redmi or Poco phone from them. It isn't bad, but it's not as good as the 13 Pro. The 13 T Pro here just feels a little bit of a step down in terms of the build quality. So we've got two 50 megapixel cameras. One is two times optical ultra wide, which is 12 megapixels. All of the cameras do support 4K, 30 and 60. It's the front facing 20 megapixel camera here and the cutout that does not. That is this 1080p, 30 frames per second, not even 60. Come on, Xiaomi. So good build down the bottom here, loudspeaker. And we've got space here for two nano SIMs. This is USB 2.0, so slow, not USB 3, unfortunately. Up the top, IR transmitter. The thickness, this is 8.5 millimeters. Overall, good build quality here from Xiaomi. So because it's a flat screen, which I do prefer here, uh, you don't get the color shifting right on the corners. Uh, you only see it shifting out a little bit. You can see it turns a bit blue at a certain angle, but that's normal. So it's an AMOLED screen that can go up to a crazy 2,600 nits peak brightness. But I think that's marketing spiel because out in the sun, I cannot actually measure anything Close to that, I measure almost 1400 nits maximum brightness. And in direct sunlight, you can make out this display. So it is the touch response, very good. So with display, the refresh rate, you can see here that it's worded up to 144 Hertz. The thing is, there's no 90 Hertz option here. It's always running at 120 for me. I don't know whether it's a firmware bug, but I've been monitoring it here with the developer option tools power monitor. And I've seen that the UI, yes, is very fluid. Performance is great. There are no drop frames in the UI. It's very good, really good actually. Always 120 frames per second. Really responsive. Okay, so that is good. And of course it's running MIUI 14. And the ROM is based off Android 13. So has it been bug free? Unfortunately not. So when I go into the camera here, I did have an issue when I went to shoot my camera comparison, I could not get 4K ultra wide video to work properly. It was crashing all the time, the app on me and let's hit record and that seems to be working now. So when you're using the ultra wide, you can't go over to the main camera. Oh yes, you can now, it's allowing me to do it. It has been a little bit glitchy and I've just had a lot of problems with it. So it seems to be behaving itself now, funnily enough, when I needed it the most, of course it didn't work for me. So there's some things here that I wanted to point out that bloatware has made a bit of a comeback or, well, kind of never really left with Xiaomi, apart from if you buy their top end. So the global ROM of the 13 Ultra had surprisingly very little bloatware, but it's all back. There's a lot of bloat on here, 2.5 gigabytes almost worth of just stuff that you want to uninstall. So battery life is excellent out of this. This is where the default refresh rate, 5,000 milliamp hour battery can go for, in general, in about light use, around about eight and a half hours, maybe even nine, which is great. Get you through a full day, but if you game, while well, you're looking at only about four hours, it really chews through it. 
So the charge time, I haven't been able to meet the conditions, whatever those are, to be able to charge in just 19 minutes. I think it's probably because my ambient temperatures are reasonably warm at the moment. So I just managed to do this in 28 minutes. But the other test that I just did this morning took about 25 minutes, 24. So it can be a bit faster there. It's still blazing fast. Now this is very good. This is Wildlife Extreme Test and it's a killer. It's a GPU pushing it hard. Does it throttle? Well, it doesn't. 5% only, very good. Now this is gonna surprise you. Take a look at this. This is the iPhone 15 Pro Max that I have here. So yeah, the titanium frame there, so that's proof. The throttling performance is so much worse on the iPhone. So in two minutes, it tanks its performance. And you can see the lowest score here is worse off than this. Yes, you're hearing that right, okay? The performance of an iPhone 15 Pro Max with the A17 Pro when you game is actually worse than this here, okay? And this proves it, and you can see that it throttles almost just over, actually, uh, almost 35%. That's, yeah, that's not good at all. And when you check out the uh, information there on the frame rate, so you can see here too, I've got it at the minimum 12 frames per second and the minimum here is 11, but yes, it did get 31, the maximum, but that's only good for two minutes, which is basically useless. So very good performance there. The trade-off is look at this temperature here, 50 degrees Celsius, wow. And yeah, I can confirm that when you're gaming for a long period, Genshin Impact for an hour, the frame and the back of it gets pretty damn hot, becomes a little uncomfortable, gets up to almost 49 degrees Celsius. Wow, really toasty. So don't be surprised if Xiaomi rele releases a patch to throttle this a little bit to reduce the temperatures from it. I can see them doing that. So we have uh, here Widevine Level 1 cert for Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, and it supports Dolby Vision, HDR, HDR10+, and HLG. However, in Netflix, uh, you don't get HDR yet. Netflix needs to update their application. Camera 2 API support. So if you're one of those guys that likes to spend and waste time installing Gcam ports, so most of them don't actually work or will crash, uh, it's going to work. It's going to, uh, well, at least support the cameras to the maximum there with level three. Internal storage. So I have the 512 gigabyte version here and it's very quick. Look at these speeds. I mean, this is crazy. That's as good as a PCIe 3.0 SSD and an Ultrabook or you gaming laptops, most laptops there. So incredible UFS 4.0 speeds here out of our storage. And now an and 2.2 two test, so they're all version 10, the latest version that you can get. And of course, this in the middle here is the iPhone 15 Pro Max. We've got the S23 Ultra and then the 13T Pro. So I'm going to run them all at the same time here. Test. There we go. And I'll show you the results. Okay, so here we go, just finished up now, and you can see it was the S23 Ultra that pulled here with the Snapdragon Gen 2, the A17 Pro here, still a very good score, and the Xiaomi 13T Pro just slightly behind by around about approximately, what, 8,000 points, just over that, which is fine, I mean, it's not a big difference at all. So really good, but you can see the GPU score is actually higher. Higher there with the 13T Pro because it doesn't throttle as much as I showed you with that 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme result. And of course, there is no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Flagships just don't really seem to have that. Well, apart from a few from Sony and Red Magic. So the loudspeaker is down here and then the one at the top. Uh, they're okay. Their volume is reasonably good and there's a bit of bass to them. So I'm going to play a sample track here at 100% volume just to give you an idea. Gaming performance, Genshin Impact right here on the top settings is good. And you'll notice that, yeah, the phone, as I talked about just before with 3D Mark, with that uh, GPU stress test, it starts to really heat up. You feel it getting really warm, the frame, but the performance is constant. It's steady. You don't see any bad frame dips or anything. Now, at certain areas of the map, if you load them in, you will see that like caching slowdown that seems to happen with everything. But overall, good performance. It's just... It's going to get hot when you game. And remember, I don't even have the case on this. If I had the case on, it'll probably get even more toasty because that acts as an insulator, of course. So the aluminum frame, that's gonna help dissipate a little bit of heat. But I don't think this backing on here, this synthetic 
leather style is really helping with the heat because it gets very warm around here. We're touching that camera and the frame is where you're going to feel that uh, it just starts to get a little bit uncomfortable with long gaming sessions. Camera performance, so Xiaomi's been pushing heavily their partnership with Leica and the front facing camera for 1080p video is very good but there's no 4K support. Rear cameras up against the iPhone 15 Pro Max and the Galaxy S23 Ultra did perform really well. Now I have a camera comparison, that's what you're looking at, just a preview of it here. So I do recommend you check out that video to see exactly what the cameras are about but I can summarize here. The Xiaomi 13T Pro often overexposes a little bit. This was noticeable more with portrait photos, with selfies, but again, it does very well. And with some firmware updates, I could easily see this competing, yes, with the more expensive flagship phones. So this is a perfect example of the exposure just being a little bit overexposed here with the portraits, making the skin tones a little bit too white there, but they've done well with the rear cameras, especially so do check out that video. There is a link in the description of this review of the 13T Pro. Recapping now on my findings here with the 13T Pro. So the front facing camera, no 4K support, still 1080p 30. That's disappointing. They keep reusing this 20 megapixel sensor. Although the image quality in the vlog footage especially has improved and is excellent for 1080p footage, I think being a flagship class of phone, it really should support 4K. Sad to see that they've still gone back to their old ways with Xiaomi with the bloatware. You get quite a bit of that straight off the bat, uh, but good to see the audio quality now that you're listening to, even though it's an external mic here, the bit rate is 256 kilobits per second. And we've got, of course, a Widevine Level 1 support, Camera 2 API support there. The internal storage is super quick. The build quality is very decent, but it feels like a step down from the 13 Pro from Xiaomi. Even though it's an alloy frame on it, it just doesn't feel as high a quality the build and it feels to me more like a Poco phone or a Redmi phone from Xiaomi, which of course are their sister brands. They're still under the, the Xiaomi umbrella, but you know, there are other brands of theirs. Battery life is very good. The performance gaming, as I showed you, is very good, but there is a trade-off for such performance that yes, as I talked about, is better than an iPhone 15 Pro Max. However, it heats up, it gets really toasty hot, so does the iPhone. It gets up to around about 48 degrees to touch. And you saw with those temperatures internally, 50 degrees Celsius. So I do expect Xiaomi to probably issue a firmware update that will lower performance, cool it down a little bit. So is it a phone you should get? Right now, the current offers are very good here in Spain where I'm filming. You get a, a TV with it, okay? You get the A2, a 4K TV, 43 inches. So that's quite a good deal. Without that, it wouldn't be quite as good. It feels to me like it's just slightly overpriced really for the spec of phone what it is. But I am impressed with that Dimensity, the 9200. Uh, plus there is a good chipset, a lot of power there. And as you saw from those scores, it's almost the same as a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. So well done, MediaTek, they really are stepping things up there. And overall, the 13T Pro comes out as a good phone, but there are some firmware updates required to really get the best out of it. So the cameras, especially that bug I had with the camera app, and once all that is fixed, you have a very decent phone. They just need to work on that pricing. So thank you so much for watching. This here review of the Xiaomi 13T Pro with the start of the video and this ending all shot on the 13T Pro itself with this external lav mic.